Welcome to Krim's Corner. This is a video about Genshin and the shielders that we have, and let's just get right down to it. It feels awful to play Genshin without a shielder, as you may often find yourself being just constantly interrupted and knocked about. So having a strong shield character can feel vital. So let's do a quick comparison of the different shield characters and even going to the map behind it. So there's a couple of ways to do this. The first quick and dirty way, and this was honestly my first approach to the problem, as well as if you do a Google search, this is probably, you know, how other people have done this. It's just to multiply the stats that we have, the scaling by arbitrary amount of health. So as you can see here, we're just gonna multiply Yanfei, Toma, Zhongli's, or we're just gonna multiply all their shields uh, scaling by 30,000, 35,000, 40,000. And this is the results that we get. Uh, as you can see here, I didn't bother including the two defense shield based characters since they use a different map and that seems like a hassle. Uh, so here we go, this is the results. Yanfei C4 is the number one best shield in the game. We have Toma pretty much directly below her, uh, Zhongli coming in third, etc., etc. As we see here for Toma, I just went ahead and used his max shield. So if we see here his ability, uh, it's just this is the absolute max the shield can hold, it makes the math for it super simple. Uh, this math method is honestly fine but it's also objectively wrong. Like mathematically, there are some core issues with it. The number one thing is that Zhongli has 5,000, more than 5,000 base health than Yanfei. This means that any artifacts and weapons that increase health by a percentage will literally provide Zhongli with 33% more health than it provides Yanfei. So a comparison where we're showing that both Yanfei and Zhongli have 40,000 health. This is a nonsensical comparison. If you were to build these two characters out, Zhongli would have like 80,000 health and Yanfei would have like 40,000 health just because of how the map works out. Which brings us to the second sheet. Let's see here. Now, this sheet took me quite a while longer to make because we have not only included every single character's base health, uh, we have also included the fact that we're using a plus 20 flower providing 4,700 flat health, as well as we're including an example of whether the character is using two artifacts that increase their max health as a percentage as the main stat, and an example where they're using all three artifacts. So, if you're using a character who might need energy recharge as one of their artifacts main stats, that's fine. We've included this math here. And importantly, I've also included the math for the 30% shield strength provided by Tenacity of the Millilith, which is an extremely important set uh, as regards for uh, how shields are calculated. And instantly we can see that pretty much Zhongli dominates the chart. He shoots up to the top, Yanfei is still producing a very respectable 16,000 health. Noel's up there at also 16,000. Layla has uh, come up here in competitive. Diona is only at 12,000, but she provides an immense amount of healing. And then we have other characters such as Jin Yan and Beidou C1 to pretty much round up the bottom. Uh, however, it is important to notice here is that Toma's shield is comparable to Zhang Li's. And I want to explain why that is. Now, if you don't know the character Toma, both his skill and his burst provide shields. In fact, his mechanic is that his shield actually grows with every normal attack uh, for every second for 15 seconds. This means that his burst provides a fairly massive 27% scaling compared to Zhongli's 12% scaling, as well as he has his skill that provides an additional 12% scaling. Uh, so despite the fact that Toma has only 10,000 base health compared to Zhongli's 14,000 base health. The fact that we're using 39% of Toma's health compared to 21% of Zhongli's health allows their two shields to be very comparable, very close to each other. Now, this chart has included quite a lot. This chart is fine. This chart has done a beautiful job and it pretty much explains things 
pretty correctly, but I think we can do it even better. I think we can go a step further and include one more thing. And that's the fact that skills have cooldowns. I know, I know this is shocking information, but it's true. And the most egregious example of this is Noel. Noel is currently sitting very, very pretty at fourth place, almost third place with her 16,000 shield. But her shield has a massive 24 second cooldown. And when you compare that to Layla, who only has 12 second cooldown, it, it just seems unfair, right? So we need to basically include this next step. We need to include the cooldown of these abilities, which brings us to the third spreadsheet. So we still see here now that we've included cooldowns. Zhongli's very low cooldowns have kept them basically at the top. It's only 12 seconds. And he has basically widened the gap against Toma, who has... 15 seconds and 20 seconds respectively. However, because of his C1, his burst actually gets down, reduced down to 17 seconds. Technically his skill does too, but the C1 says it only happens once every 20 seconds. So if I were to reduce the cooldown of his skill for these calculations, it technically wouldn't be correct. So I just left it at 15 seconds. It wouldn't change the uh, math too much. Uh, Layla has now risen to her uh, rightful place as third best shielder in the game. And we have a bit of an odd duck rising up from the ranks, and that is Shin Yan. Uh, a lot of people just discredit Shin Yan like she's a garbage tier character and don't use her. But I feel like she's a little bit underrated in that she's, as you can see here, she's actually the fourth best shielder of how much her cooldown can provide. And that's specifically because her C2, her second constellation, makes it so that her burst also provides a shield. Now, I will also admit though, is that this is kind of tricky to use because her skill provides a shield, but unlike Toma, who can use his burst and shield uh, skill at the same time to get a very meaty shield and keep it rolling for basically forever, uh, Shin Yan has to basically use switch to her, use her skill, switch out, do some things, switch back to her, use her burst, switch out, do some things, switch back, use her skill. You have to kind of like keep it uh, stagnated or else it just doesn't work. So yeah, there's a bit of usability issue there. Uh, Yan Fei, who originally was the very number one top of the chart, has dropped to sixth place. Uh, Diona is basically right there behind her. And the fact that Diona provides excellent healing as well as shielding, uh, keeps her very competitive. Noel has dropped from third place all the way down to what is essentially near the bottom. Uh, and Beto and Baizu basically rounding at the bottom. I do want to clarify some things with Baizu. Uh, Baizu is a brand new character, and the way his shield works is not that it prevents damage per se, is that it prevents interruption, which is a better way to describe it. All right, so that's technically the end of part one. Hold on. Uh, if you liked this video and you've seen the comparison of each character, please like and subscribe. This is a massive thing for me since I'm a brand new creator, but I want to keep talking for a little bit longer because I want to discuss the numbers behind the math. I want you to not only see these numbers, I want you to understand these numbers. As I've said it earlier, this game takes your character's base health and multiplies that against any percent health increases you have from artifacts or weapons. And then it adds any flat health you have from your artifacts or from your flower, the 4,700 from the flower at the end. Taking Zhongli's health here, he has 14,600 health. If he has plus 100% from his artifacts, he will go up to 28,000 health. And then the flower will be added next for the 4,780, and he will go up to around 32, 33,000. If you were to increase that, for say example, 200% health because of all the excellent subsets you managed to find for him. Uh, once again, we'll take his base health of 14,000. We'll triple that basically to 14, 28, 42,000, and then add the flat health at the end, giving us around, where were we at? Uh, 52,000, 57,000-ish. As you can see, I did not script that part. There's two more important factors to take into account, though. The first thing to take into account is the shield element. Shields are 250% more effective against the damage of their own elements. So while 
Layla Shield can provide an absolutely fantastic 16,000 health uh, against just damage in general. It becomes an absolutely absurd 40,000 health if all that damage is only cryo. Layla Shield is technically stronger than even Zhongli's shield if all the damage you're taking is just cryo. Now, there is one exception to this, and that is the element in Geo. Geo shields are special in that they are 150% more effective against all the damage. So, because this is just pretty much always in effect, I've actually went ahead and already increased the relative shield amounts by this percentage. So the Zhongli that you saw earlier, as well as the Noel you saw earlier, has already included this 50% bonus. The next thing to consider is a stat called Shield Strength, which generally only comes from two sources. There are a few other things, but let, let's start with these two important ones. The artifact set Tenacity of the Millip is the most famous source of Shield Strength because not only does it increase the Shield Strength, but it also works for the entire team, increasing their attack by a fairly respectable 20%. This is the same amount that uh, the Noblesse artifact provides, the Noblesse obliges. It's very useful. The reason, though, that this artifact can be difficult to include in your team is that whoever is using this artifact set needs to have a damage over time skill, not a burst, a skill that is damage over time. So for characters like Layla and Zhang Li, who already have damage over time skills and they're the shielder, it makes it very easy for them to be able to provide it. But it is also important to note that the character using tenacity does not need to provide any shields and they will still be able to increase the shield strength for the entire team. Other characters like Kuki Shinobu can be very uh, excellent at using tenacity as well as Yao Yao and a few others. So Kuki Shinobu will provide the tenacity buff while for example, Yan Fei will provide the actual shielding and this works. The other artifact to look out for is that increases shield strength is called Retracing Bolid. Bolid, I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce that. Uh, and this artifact is a little trickier to use and potentially understand. Unlike tenacity, it only increases the shield strength of the person using the artifact, which essentially means that your main DPS needs to use retracing. Your main DPS still does not need to be the one that provides the shield. It could still be another character. So for example, Yoi Mia can be using retracing while the owner provides the shield. But the fact that your main character needs to use retracing can make this fairly difficult to use, especially since retracing only increases the damage of normal and charge attacks so if you're using a burst based damage build or a skill based damage build it may not be providing the damage that you need so yoimi is a great example other characters might not be all sources of shield strength are at stack additively so for example if we have 30 percent from tenacity and 30 35 percent from retracing we would have 65 percent some characters like uh, Layla, Zhongli, and Toma can provide 24 or 25% shield strength respectively. Again, they would all be added additively. But the shield strength is multiplied against the elements. So for Geo characters who have the 150% bonus against all elements will actually receive a mathematically slightly higher, slightly stronger effect from having shield strength than other characters. This has been already calculated in the uh, map I showed earlier. Here, here it is again. Uh, so mentally, you don't have to worry about that. I have included uh, Toma, Zhongli, and Layla's character-based shield strength already as well. The final thing I want to, final two things I want to mention, but we won't go too in depth in them now, is that a character's defense stat reduces not only how much damage they take but how much damage the shield that they're using takes. So a character like Noel, who has 3000 defense, she may take some of the strongest attacks in the game and her shield won't even break. But if we take that exact same shield that did not break on Noel and gave it to the 400 defense Baizu, he, he might just die like straight up. Like it may one shot him. 
The final thing to mention is the Geo Elemental Reaction creates a crystallized shard on the ground. If you pick up that shard, you get a shield. That shield scales up Elemental Mastery. And honestly, it's not only one of the less utilized mechanics in the game, but there are some things I want to talk about that that I feel like it deserves essentially its own video. So please be on the lookout for that. I will be making more video guides and posts on all sorts of Genshin subjects and essentially the math of the game. So please feel free to ask me on anything. I'll try to respond the best I can. Um, I will be making more, not only videos, but like Reddit posts, MiHoYo lab posts. So, you know, please feel free to check them out. Uh, reply on there as well. Once again, please like, comment, and subscribe. Sorry to ask you, but it is massive since I'm a brand new creator. Thank you again for watching, for sticking through the end of the video, and have a fantastic day.